All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about connective tissues, and I wanna give you just an overall guideline of what you're gonna be looking for to identify your connective tissues. One of the things that you guys are gonna look for with your connective tissues is you're gonna look at the matrix. Okay, you're gonna take a look at the matrix and use the matrix as something to help you identify what connective tissue we're dealing with. And so do you guys remember what the matrix is? It's not always a liquid because in your bones, it's actually solid. So in blood, it happens to be liquid, but it's defined as what? The matrix is defined as the non-living material. That cells. Yeah, that surrounds cells. Uh, not gels, cells. So for example, in your blood, we have red blood cells and white blood cells. And then the non-living matrix is the plasma of your cells. So this is, these, the things that I'm writing are the things that you do wanna be adding to your notes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, do we know what the word abundant means? Yeah, it means there's lots of it. Okay, there's lots of connective um, tissue in your body. And then do we understand what widely distributed means? What, is, what would you say that meant? It's spread out. It's found all over, okay? There are many different types of connective tissues. They appear very different from each other and they have very different functions. That means they do lots of different things in the body. Another characteristics is that they don't have a lot of cells. Now, compare that to what we know about epithelial tissues. Yesterday I gave you the, the analogy that epithelial tissues are tightly packed to Together with no matrix so I said if you were each each of you was a cell and the imp, and the space around you was the matrix okay you would be a connective tissue in here right now because there's lots of space around you and if we took and we measured like square footage in the room or even cubic space in the room three-dimensional space we have more space than bodies. But if I took all the desks and I pushed you up side by side by side, touching each other, then you would be an epithelial tissue. So connective tissue has lots of space in between the cells. The most common, okay, most common connective tissue is areolar. And it's also sometimes called loose areolar. And the reason why it is the most common connective tissue is because it's found under all epithelial tissues. If I write ET, you know I mean epithelial tissues, correct? You can remember that. And again, if you go home and you miss part of this lecture, you can just fast forward to the section that you didn't capture and copy that part. Or pause and take a moment to write everything down. Okay, loose areolar connective tissue. You're gonna see dots of cells and lots of fibers in between and let me at this point insert a picture of loose areolar in here for you. I should still be recording. Yes, I'm still recording. So let's pull up a picture of loose areolar. And that's a nice picture right there. And so what you see are the cells. The cells are these structures here. And then this little picture here, can you actually identify and see the nucleus versus the cell? 
see the more darkly staining nucleus and then the cell, uh, the, uh, the whole cell around it here, you can see a whole cell. Okay, but the nucleus itself is out of view. And so this doesn't look organized at all. And you see fibers, these are fibers, running in all different directions. What do you think could potentially be an advantage of having these fibers, which add strength? If they're elastic fibers, they, they allow it to stretch, but then come back into shape. Why do you think it would be advantageous for the fibers to be running in all different directions? To give it support. And think about your skin. If you have areolar connective tissue underneath our skin everywhere, because our skin is epithelial tissue, does your skin only get pulled and bent in one direction? No, it goes in lots of different directions. So you want it, you don't want it to tear and shred. You can tweak your knee if it bends the wrong way, but you usually don't break your skin, right? That's because you have a different type of connective tissue in your tendons and ligaments, and it doesn't bend lots of different ways. And that's why you'll tear a tendon. Make sense? But your skin, so think about my ankle injury. The twisting that I did took those tendons and ligaments and stretched them beyond the point where they could hold my ankle together, and that's why it came out of joint. It dislocated. But my skin, even though it was really, really stretched, didn't tear. It almost tore. And boy, oh boy, could I feel it. Because in our skin, we have special nerve endings called stretch receptors. And so you know when someone's giving you an Indian burn and they're twisting on your arm and it burns and it hurts? You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You know that burning feeling where you're like, oh, don't go any farther because it feels like my, my skin's going to shred? Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like on the inside of my ankle because my skin was so stretched from the bone pushing through on the inside that it was about to rip through, and that's called a compound fracture. And now it's, that's the, the part of my skin that's the most sensitive. Okay, so let's go back to this. I timed out on, on my iPad. So that's a nice picture of loose areolar connective tissue. Um, the pictures that you're going to be getting um, on your quiz aren't necessarily always going to be um, the exact same pictures that are in your book. And I do want to give you a heads up on your quiz and then on your final quest. I will hold you accountable for all of the connective tissues that are listed in your textbook and that are given to you as pictures in your textbook. So you're listening to that? Mm -hmm. All of those connective tissues are fair game on your test, but I may not necessarily use the exact same picture that's in your book, okay? But again, my attempt, I'm not attempting to trick you in any way. Okay, so connect, we gotta go back to where we were. So we just talked about areolar. Now I wanna talk to you about adipose tissue. Okay, I'm gonna give you a fact that's gonna blow your mind. You ready? We are each born with a genetically predetermined number of fat cells. So some people just have more fat cells on their body. So when you gain weight, you're not growing more fat cells. What's actually happening is that each of the fat cells that you already had and where they happen to be distributed on your body because women distribute fat cells differently than men. Like there's the pear body type and there's the apple body type. If you have an apple body type, you get the, big, the, the bigger weight around your midsection, which is harder on your heart. If you're the pear, you got more of the junk in your trunk and your thighs, okay? Women tend to be more pears because that's where we store body fat for breastfeeding and for, for getting pregnant and having healthy babies, okay? So, if you're born with a certain number of fat cells, you know, most of us didn't start out overweight, right? We, we gained weight through maybe not so good eating habits throughout life. And your metabolism definitely changes. Your level of activity definitely changes. You can't always eat the same as you did when you were younger as you do as you get older. And especially when you go into college, they talk about the, for girls, the freshman 15, because you spend more time sitting and studying. You're maybe less active. You're maybe stress eating, eating a lot of carbs, which goes to body fat really easily. So what happens is the genetically predetermined number of fat cells that you actually have 
each of those fills up with oil and gets larger. So when you lose weight, you're not losing fat cells, your fat cells are shrinking. Why? Because you're making your body use the lipid, the oil that's stored in each one of your fat cells. You're making your body use that energy. How? You're making your body move more so it has a higher energy demand, and you're giving it less of the crappy carbohydrates, the junky energy calories. See, when you eat chips and soda, your body takes that simple, uh, really highly processed carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, and it breaks it down and it uses it right away for your cells for energy. And then all that extra glucose gets converted to fat. Well, your body's not gonna need all that quick energy. You do this like sugar rush and then crash, right? If you cut back on those highly processed carbohydrates and you give your body more of the beneficial your body's going to be forced into using more of the lipids stored in your body, and that's going to shrink your fat cells. The only way to lose fat cells is liposuction, okay? Where they go in under your skin to the areas where you have fat deposits, and they, and they make, use a long metal tube, and they suck it out. Yeah, which there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of bruising. You better go to a good plastic surgeon because if they take too much, then your skin doesn't lay properly. It can result in serious infections and hospitalizations. And then after you get it, you, after you get the liposuction, you have to wear this compression bandage for weeks and weeks and weeks so that your connective tissue underneath has an opportunity to reconnect. All of this about adipose tissue. Mind blown at all, people? Yeah. Yeah, well, ugh. yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, but it's it's pretty gross too. I, it's just, I feel bad for the patient. They don't even know that they're Well, that. that's the beauty of being unconscious. <laughs> you don't know what's happening to your body, but you feel it after you. If you've ever had a serious surgery where they really had to manip manipulate your body, mm -hmm. or if um, you were in a position where maybe your arm was like taped down for an IV, afterwards, oh, you feel like you've been hit by a truck. Mm -hmm. It really is painful. Okay, so adipose tissue, fat tissue, what do I want you to know? Um, it's going to be really, really big tissues with a tiny little nucleus over here in the corner. And the majority of the cell is going to be lipid. Lipid storage, fat storage for energy. So, and insulation. But we also have fat storage for protection. And this is the problem when people become really, really skinny, like anorexic or bulimic. Um, that can do potential kidney damage because your kidneys are held in place and protected by fat. And if you lose all the fat on your body, then your kidneys can actually sag and you can go into kidney failure. What else do I want to tell you about lipids? I think it always has this honeycomb appearance. Do you guys know what honeycomb is? It's the waxy house that um, bees make. So, and when I show you the picture, you're gonna be like, oh, okay. So it's just like all this empty space, but it's really not empty, you just, you know. So I'm gonna show you a picture in a minute. I think right now, right? Oh, wait, the pictures are at the end? Okay, sorry. All right, fibrous connective tissue. Okay, the type of fibrous connective tissue that we're going to look at is called um, dense, dense regular. And the reason why it's called dense regular is that the fibers run parallel to each other. It has a wavy appearance. And the fibers are all packed really closely together. I gotta switch to white so I can write in that area up at the top.
You guys are adding to your notes the things I'm writing down, right? Mm -hmm. The fibers are made out of collagen. The fibers are part of the matrix, okay? So it's collagen, which is a protein, and proteins are not alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, can, they use collagen for lip injections, and collagen is also found in um, our areolar connective tissue. So what they're doing is they're using it as a filler to plump out from be below the skin to make your lips look bigger or to inject it underneath lines on your skin to plump the skin out, and it's not permanent. And you can also have things really messed up. There's an actress who who had terrible they also have synthetic fillers that if you go to disreputable people or there have been horrible cases where people will have a a a lip filling party at their house where someone who's not licensed comes and everyone goes to a person's house and for a hundred bucks they get lip injections and it's done by someone who's not certified and it's not done in a sterile environment and they're not using good stuff and there have been people who have developed horrible infections and reactions so yeah just so what they they what well you know Kylie Jenner is a powerful pull on people I guess yeah well okay I you know I really urge you guys to go look at a picture of Kim Kardashian before and now, she was, so she, she was a beautiful, natural looking, beautiful girl. Oh, no. And now, I, I think that if any of the Kardashians got too close to an open flame, they might melt. <laughs> Except oh. Kim or Ink. Oh, yeah. oh, Courtney's had work done. Really? They've all had work done. I thought Courtney was like the most natural or something. Well, she may be the most natural, but they've all had work done. Okay, and you know, that's fine, that's their prerogative, but the problem is I don't want to measure my beauty or the beauty of my children against some ideal that's unattainable. But I hate that. I hate that. So, tendons, tendons. Does anybody know where we have tendons? In our knees, to connect our knees. Okay, so yes, in your knees, in your ankles, at all of our joints, and tendons connect muscle to bone. I like to remember the Achilles tendon, which connects, it's at the back of your ankle. Your Achilles tendon connects your calf muscle to the bottom of your foot, which allows you to walk. Okay, now keep these characteristics in mind. When we look at the pictures, I'll kind of quiz you and, and we'll talk our way through the pictures. Okay, bone, bone is a solid connective tissue, right? Solid. And that's because the matrix is calcified, which makes it solid. And obviously support and protection movement would not be possible without our skeletal system. And we have cells in our bones called osteocytes. I'm sure you can figure out what site means. What do you think osteo means? Oh, go out on a limb. What about osteoporosis? Osteo means bone. So osteocytes are the bone cells. And the osteocytes live in chambers called lacunae. So, I'll ask you this question. Is bone alive? Yes. Bones are living organs, part of the organ system called the skeletal system. And since bone is an organ, you guys need to think of it as not only connective tissues, but it has, there's a periosteum, there's blood vessels, there's epithelial tissue, there's nervous tissue, all that. When you break a bone, it hurts because there are nerves. Cartilage, there are different types. 
we are going to focus on hyaline cartilage. That's what I'm going to test you on. I can't make her a star. Oh, one more thing about bone. We're going to look at compact bone. Okay, compact bone. There's compact bone and spongy bone. We're going to look at compact. Okay, on cartilage, we're going to look at hyaline cartilage. And cartilage um, is found um, in the tip of your nose. Cartilage is found on the ends of bones. That's a different type of cartilage. It's elastic, but yes, it's in your ears. Okay, but I'm talking about specifically about hyaline cartilage is going to be at the ends of your bones. So it's there for protection. So if you have injured your joints seriously, you may have areas where you're bone on bone that the cartilage has been worn away. And that means that you're, you're going to end up having knee transplants <laughs> yep. at some time in your life and maybe more than one. Because mm -hmm. right now knee, tra knee transplants don't last forever. My yeah, now your ACL, that's a ligament. Yeah. Okay, so that's where the, the ligaments hold the bones together. They shaved off my piece, the, um, the cartilage of my PCL, so it's yeah. bone on bone on my PCL. Yeah, bone on bone, so that's got to hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, blood, that's our fluid connective tissue, and the matrix is called the plasma. Yes, ma'am? Uh huh. What what's happening is gas is escaping, escaping from between your joint spaces. So that's what happens when you crack your bones. Because there's a joint space in there, and so that's why you can crack your knuckles, and then it takes a while before you can crack them again, and that's because it takes time for the gas to build up in the joint space. And there is no connection between cracking joints and arthritis. For real. For real. It, it's just something your mom tells hair. you because she doesn't want to listen to the noise. Okay, now. Are really true that your bone gets bigger? Okay, no, that's, it's not true. It doesn't do anything to your joints. Now, you can, my daughter's knees will click and crack, and that's because of, you know, she's young and she's growing, and there's like misalignment in the bones. Now, if that's happening, the bones can be grinding against each other, right? And that's not good. I'll sit funny, I'll straighten my leg, leg. and it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, oh my God. Okay, we have a, a few more minutes here, you guys. Just hang with me. Okay, so this is what? What kind of cell? Or what kind of tissue? It's adipose. And so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I see cell membrane here. And then I see like a little cell there. And there's actually the cell. But most of this is empty space. Okay. So yes, this is adipose. So if you lose weight, each one of these cells is going to get smaller. So that's adipose. Okay. What do you think this is? What kind of fibrous? Okay, collagen is the name of the protein that makes the waves. These are the actual chondrocytes, okay? And so this is dense fibrous. This is going to be a tendon. Now, do you see how all the collagen runs in one direction? This tendon is only going to be strong if you're pulling it in that direction. If you twist this tendon and it gets pulled against perpendicular, it's going to fray and it's going to tear. It's going to shred. And that's what happens when... You tear a tendon. You can also do something called rupturing a tendon. So since a tendon is connected to a muscle and it, and it takes the muscle and it connects the muscle to, this is such a bad drawing here as a bone, okay? And so here's your tendon and on one side it's connected to the bone above and on the other side it connects to the bone down here, okay? And so when this contracts, it pulls on the bone, right? If it contracts too hard, it can actually pull off of the bone, and that's called a ruptured tendon. It can pull off part way. There's a, a layer on the outside of the tendon, called, or on the outside of a bone called a periosteum, and it can actually pull that away, and that's called shin splints. Okay? 
Tendonitis is when you have an inflammation of a tendon because it's getting bent too much over a bone. Okay, and so this is, you guys are going to learn so much about your bodies and why things hurt and what happens. What's that? Bone. That is bone. This is compact bone. Make sure you study that picture. Here is a cell. Here is a cell. Here is a cell. Here is a cell. Remember those cells live in little houses called lacunae. This is the central canal where you have blood vessels. Why are those blood vessels there? Because these cells need oxygen and nutrients. How does it get there? It has to diffuse all the way through from the central canal out to these cells, all the way out here. So these little central canals are called canaliculi little canals, canal, canal, liculi, little canals. These canaliculi allow oxygen and sugars, nutrients, to get all the way out to these cells through diffusion. We're gonna learn a lot more about the structure of bone. This is just a basic, and I spelled it wrong, C-A-N-I-C-U-L-U. Can I, can I, ah, I spelled it again wrong. Hold on. That's a hard word to spell. C-A-N-I-C. Can I, can I lick, can I lick your eye? I always say can I lick your eye. Can I, F-I-C-U-L, can I, can I lick your eye? Ah, oh, I think I spelled it right. Dang it. Why am I brain farting on that word? I'm brain farting. Sorry, you guys. Can I lick your eye? Oh, my favorite. This is my favorite. Anybody have an idea of what this is? It is a cartilage. Does anybody know what kind of cartilage? Hyaline cartilage. Okay, so you have lacunae. Can you see the cells inside of the lacunae? There's the nucleus. I'll, I'll switch to yellow. See, there's a nucleus. There's a nucleus. There's a nucleus. It's not the whole thing. The cell is inside. So on this one, can you see the just the little outline of the cell? And then this darker line there, that's the lacunae. In hyaline cartilage, it's going to be distinguished by having a matrix that is smooth, glassy in appearance, and no fibers in it. Okay? Smooth, glassy, no fibers. So this is the matrix, all of this. You don't see any lines like you saw in articular cartilage. Yeah, every cell has to have a nucleus. Blood. I think this one should be an easy. It should be a gimme. You're going to see 100 red blood cells for every one white blood cell. These tiny little things here are called platelets. helping with blood clotting. And then of course the matrix is plasma. And that's the end of connective tissues, okay?